Hallelujah. The Lord began to talk to me about something that he called the spirit of witchcraft in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And hear me, whenever you hear witchcraft, for many of us, the first thing you think about is occult, drinking blood and eating someone's flesh. Hallelujah. The word witchcraft means to cause a man to err using the tool of deception. So let me, let me correct your mindset and understanding. Because we have only associated witchcraft to the occult and, and witches and wizards. But Paul uses this language for Christians, the ones he got them born again. So you can be sure their salvation was true. But he said, all foolish Galatians who used a teaching to bewitch you, Hallelujah. And the Lord began to speak to me about the rampant manifestation of what he calls the spirit of witchcraft. Manifesting on our pulpits. Manifesting in the life of ministers. Genuine ministers. I'm not talking of false ministers. And many do not even know that they have become entangled with the manifestation and the spirit of witchcraft, of manipulation and control. And it's spreading like wildfire in the name of mentorship and fatherhood. Many people have received spirits and demons and manifestations of things they cannot account for and explain. And while all of this is happening, the church is getting excited, calling it Rema, calling it growth, calling it revival. And the Lord is silent, saying what is happening in the earth. And all the so-called prophets who call themselves oracles, whose revelation stops in the second heavens, where the spiritual wickedness operates, they receive every kind of demonic manifestation and call it the words from God. Hallelujah. And the Lord is disturbed. Because even those who the Bible calls the elect are already being deceived. Are you listening to me? Many people in church are beginning to doubt the things that they believe and the things that they have been taught. Because of certain manifestations, many pastors and ministers and, 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 and all kinds of people all kinds of occultic people who have left their their places of worship and now want suit and agbada come and stand in the pulpit. They talk like Christ. They display power like Christ. Hallelujah. They prophesy and their prophecies look true. But the Bible says in that day we will say I heal the sick in your name. I cast out devils in your name. I prophesied in your name. He said but the Lord will say depart from me ye workers of iniquity. So open your ears tonight. Open your eyes. Open your heart and open your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 that and God, you mustn't turn there, just, he says, and Elohim said, let us make man in our own image. Hallelujah. He says, and let them, the man, let them have dominion over what? Please turn there quickly.
Are you there? Okay, Genesis 1.26. Let's read. One to read. Hold on. Over what? What's the first thing? Second. Third. Over what? And the last one. And everything that creepeth. Was man mentioned there? According to God's word, no man was supposed to dominate another man. Are you listening to me? This is the first manifestation of this spirit of witchcraft that is happening in the body. And guess who the distributors are? The pastors themselves. Are you listening to me? There has been a, a manifestation of manipulating people in the body of Christ. And ministers rob people of the freedom that God has given them to love God. All in the name of pastor. All in the name of father. All in the name of mentor. All in the name of whatever. And they force people to do things. Right now, the average Christian is in bondage. It's called Christian slavery. Hallelujah. Our churches have become prison centers for people. Families have been brought under bondage. Under yoke of oppression and manipulation that comes from so-called pastors. Hallelujah. A father is not at liberty to buy a car for his wife until the pastor gives approval. Parents cannot make decisions for their children until the pastor gives approval. There are many ministries whose account numbers you people come to submit account numbers to people to be able to have track. It's called manipulation and witchcraft. Hallelujah. In the name of not fighting authority. Every man of God, pastor, prophet, apostle, think they have a right to do and undo with members. And we become semi-gods to members. They dare not do anything. I will release a curse upon your life. Hallelujah. A man of God stands up and likes a lady. And the lady has no will and no sense to go and pray and decide. He tells her, I like you, and that is it. Let me tell you something. It's called witchcraft and manipulation. Are you listening to me? And many people are carrying this spirit. They like it. They usurp authority over people in church. People cannot find expression. Hallelujah. An elderly man of over 50 years cannot travel until he tells his pastor. Pastors have literally replaced the place of the Holy Spirit in the life of people. They refuse people from making any decision. The spiritual level of the pastor is what he compels all the members to maintain that level. And if for any reason they are attempting to rise, he creates a system that strangles them and brings them back. All foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? When did all these things start creeping into the church without the prophets and so-called apostles knowing? Because we are busy taking offerings in church. We are busy looking for money. We are busy doing all the things we are doing. And the Bible says, while men slept. While men slept. The enemy has been waiting for years for the body of Christ to sleep. He said, while men slept. Hallelujah. There are many people. Some of you are here seated. Your pastors have stopped you. There are many of you, this meeting you are coming. You are even coming secretly. Because the day your pastors or your, your mentor or your, your God or whatever you call them. 
know that you are coming. They say, so are my teachings not enough to build you? Witchcraft. Demonic teachings that are being taught in church as a result of the insecurity that ministers feel. So they try to create teachings that can accommodate their weakness in fear of losing members. And so the man does not want to grow. He does not want to know God. He does not want to press into God. And when the wind of the spirit is carrying as many who are interested, he begins to bring all kinds of so-called prophetic teachings. Prophets and apostles have become semi-gods right now. They have the power to free you, take you to heaven, take you to hell, do any kind of thing. Bible says there is no name given on man which any man can be saved. Are you following me now? I'm communicating to you the heart cry of the spirit of the living God. Pastors who suffered complex all their life suddenly find a congregation of gullible members that they can revenge for all their years of complex. And they prove it by putting people in yokes of bondage. And the church, the average member is like a prisoner. And the pastor holds them and begins to pull and sway them according to what he believes is the direction of God. There are many churches where the members cannot see visions. The pastor said, God cannot speak to you except through your pastor. Witchcraft. And manipulation. People are manipulated. All kinds of rubbish prophetic word. If you sow this, if you do this, Isaiah 33 verse 5, sow 33 nara, 5 kobo. Witchcraft. Hallelujah. A pastor gets up and is tired of his wife and suddenly comes to meet another lady and says, please can you come in or somebody come in with a prophetic word that my wife is a witch. And then the church management sits down and they say, madam, go. As they are going, you are seeing the next person. Three days later he comes and no member can talk. It's happening in some of your churches. And none of you can lift your mouth and talk. None of the intelligent people. Because the church has traded their mind and their intelligence for the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. And so what happens? They begin to create a disciple called sons. Those who will propagate this demonic agenda. And all kinds of young people who come and stand. They don't know anything about the word of God. Nothing. Just taught somebody to fall. And they stand up. And they are being these demonic agents of propagating these things. And they call it ministry. Hallelujah. And then we the young people are following stupidly. A young boy with his little disciples too. You two cook for me. You two sleep with me. They, they don't beg. They don't control. There's no diplomatic way. They just say it. Selena, let me see you in my house by 11. Full stop. The servant of God has spoken. And then the gullible members go. A man of God comes in a house and he sees a beautiful TV that took a man five years of travail and hard work and looks at it and says take it to my office it's a prophetic instruction i tell you tonight as a servant of the living god the name is witchcraft i don't care who is doing it many of you the spirit of god has been telling you this is wrong it's just that you don't have the audacity to speak thank god for anointing me because the church will hear this message I know once again I'll be criticized because of it. <laughs> Somebody asks one man of God one day, why are you always being criticized? And he says, yeah, that's a stupid question. Go and ask your pastors why they are not being criticized.
Hallelujah. The church of God right now has become a sin-friendly environment. Demons come and sit down comfortably. And the ma- because, see, because the men of God are the, let me tell you something with Satan. Every time you begin to stand for something, the way Satan takes you is, he makes you a victim of your message and you will not be able to preach it again. The moment you hear a man of God who has been preaching certain things and he cannot preach it again, I tell you under God, he has become a victim of his message. Hallelujah. And all kinds of ladies in different churches have become cheap instruments for sex. That every man of God with his emotional excesses who will never agree that he needs help because he believes he's a new creation suddenly finds out that so I can have desire to sleep with Gladys. And he says, no, no, no. I refuse it. And the next thing by evening is coming to usurp authority Proving from scripture. Hallelujah. And then we carry every kind of message and try to balance and adjust it. We part here and part here with one scripture and take the B part of one verse and join with the C part of another verse to make sense according to what we want. Hallelujah. Men of God sit in church and suddenly they see a manifestation of miracles in their members. And they know they are intimidated because, listen, let me tell you, there are two ways to respect a man. One, as a result of his track record of quality leadership. Or number two, because he has created a system that compels you to worship him. Hallelujah. And many men of God do not have a track record of integrity in the presence of their members. So they have to create a system. Don't ask questions. Don't you dare talk. Whatever you see, let your eyes see it there. You are passing and a man is stealing. Stealing from church offering. Hallelujah. You enter the house of a man of God. The next day is a powerful program. And you see him balance and he's watching pornography on the TV. Don't ask questions. He says, Pastor, good afternoon, sir. He says, how are you? Bless you. And then you are shocked. You are surprised. But you cannot talk. Oh, foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? And right now, another aspect of that witchcraft is to turn the body of Christ into a therapeutic center. Where they tell people, we all do it. No, there's nobody who doesn't do it. We all go through sad times. We all go through this. We all fall once in a while. Uh, ladies sleep with ladies. Guy, it happens. It's in our human culture. Yet, we are the first to preach that we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. Yet, we are the first to preach that we have been lifted and we are seated in Christ far above. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? There are many people. And then, suddenly, many ministers and many ministries realize that because they are not walking by the principles of God, the required grace and power to move forward and attract, in quotes, the crowd is not there. So what happens? They begin to visit all kinds of witch doctors. Can I tell you? Let me tell you the truth. I tell you as the servant of the living God, there are more men of God than you can imagine that visit witch doctors every week in this country. Including those you see on TV. Including some of them that you sit under their ministrations. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. And many of you are always in a hurry. Oh, lay hands on me. Papa, lay hands. Mama, lay hands. You better know what kind of hand you bring your head under. Otherwise, you will step into many of you. It was when certain hands were laid on you. You suddenly saw some things happening in your life. Until today, you are suffering innocently. Hallelujah. 
there are, there are pastors today and ministers of the gospel. Hear me. There are pastors and ministers of the gospel who use witchcraft and manipulation to literally monitor each and every of their member. You do something, they come and meet you. They call it prophetic revelation. I tell you, it's witchcraft and manipulation. You talk against him somewhere, he will come and tell you. And you say, hey, prophet this, prophet that. Please listen to this message because it is very important. This is the voice of God speaking to the church. Hallelujah. And a few who have opened up themselves to God to pick these signals and realize that it's wrong are so afraid of losing members. Let me tell you something. 90% of the ministers around, their number one fear is losing members. And so they cannot preach certain truths. Although they know that this is what God is saying. Although they know that this is wrong. What if I preach no members, no offering. No offering, no expansion. Or no food for their belly. According to how diligent they are in, in spending the, the Lord's money. Are you listening to me? And while all of this is happening, listen to me. The devil is advancing and penetrating into churches. Are you listening to me? Different kinds of manifestations that happen in churches, all in the name of power. I tell you, most of these things, they are called occultic pacifism. Where higher demons come to pacify other demons. And many people feel happy. And then they go, but are you getting blessed? I know I'm offending you. I know some of you are not happy. But I rather serve the living God. I rather serve the living God. The name apostle is not a title. It's an office. It's a controversial office. I'm not looking for fame and power. I rather serve God in truth than to serve men. Are you following me now? Oh foolish Galatians, who has caused you to err by using deceptive teachings? Hallelujah. I remember a particular lady who a man of God had been sleeping with her again and again. And every time the guy went to church, you would see the power of the Holy Ghost. And the lady was amazed. Sometimes right from the bed, dear, right from the bed, you wake up and bath and go for the meeting. And as he's stepping in, genuinely, he had never gone to any native doctor. And you would see the manifestation of God. And prophecies, quoting scripture after scripture. And the lady was convinced that maybe God exempted him because he was a man of God. So God gave you immunity. Hallelujah. And one time she came for my meeting. Then we were on campus. And I thought how that there is a difference between the gift of the spirit and the fruit of the spirit. Are you listening to me? I thought that the gift of the spirit is not equal to spiritual maturity. So that a man is operating in gifts does not mean the man is spiritually mature. And the lady found the secret and went back and told him and he warned her and banned her that he should never come for my meeting again. And he said, there is no man of God that doesn't sleep around except they don't want to tell you. I tell you as the servant of God under the Lord most high that I serve. If, you, if there is any lady here that knows that as ministers we sleep with you, stand up. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm not preaching this to condemn pastors or to condemn people. I'm preaching this to show you that Satan is entering the body of Christ. We come every Sunday putting on our suit. But if we are not careful, Satan wants to abort the revival that God is bringing. Are you following me now? Have you not been disturbed at the caliber of young ministers that are coming up? 
Go around campus and see the next set of young ministers that are supposed to be taking over what God is doing. Arrogance beyond imagination. Indiscipline beyond imagination. Lack of control. Lack of every kind of thing. They watch their TV and see it and write it and get up and go and do it. The spirit of witchcraft. That's the first message tonight in the body of Christ. Are you listening to me? And there are many people operating under this spirit and do not know. See, let me tell you the truth. You've got to choose whether to serve the Lord Most High. A day is coming. Hear me. Jesus Christ is coming back for his church. Are you listening to me? A day is coming. For those of you who have listened to all kinds of godless messages. That Jesus is not coming. Because of this and they have compared scripture to scripture. Let me tell you. I have seen a vision of the rapture. Jesus is coming. Whether or not you believe it. Because... I stop assuming that everybody in church believes that we are going. If you don't believe it, when we are leaving, I will show you where my Bible is because you will desperately need it when the church leaves. I assure you. I assure you, you will need it. It will become the only road map. Are you listening to me? Right now, the issue of getting souls born again in church is not even an issue again. Have you noticed it? Um, this is the manifestation of the spirit of witchcraft. Everybody just says, well, if you are not, the, well, just amend your ways. Because we do not want to hurt people. So, Satan is helping us to design a sin-friendly church. You come as you are, but you do not stay as you are. Somebody gets born again. Two weeks. The next thing, they ordain him a pastor. They go and give him a whole branch with all the unrenewed Babylon. Half salvation, half Babylon. And suddenly when he stands and finds out that in the first service only ten ladies came and he remembers that only two weeks ago he was sleeping. Suddenly what happens? Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Let me teach you the correct gospel. Before God interrupted or not interrupted, he brought this thing. The, I, I plan to teach seven teachings in the body of Christ that need correction and balance. That's the next series we are going into. Seven teachings in the body of Christ that require correction and balance. They are not wrong. But if we continue that way, let me tell you one of it. One of it is that the moment you get born again, hallelujah, all things are okay, all things are alright, whatever it is, you are above, listen to me. And listen very, very well. When you get born again, hear me, when you get born again, your spirit is reunited to the spirit of God. Are you following me now? But your mind, your soul, where all the junks, the, the strongholds that Satan has put, let me tell you, is still there intact. Are you listening to me? Why will God give you the Holy Ghost? Why will he give you tongues? Why will he give you the word of God? Why will he send you to a church to be blessed if everything is okay? Are you listening to me? And as a result, what happens? There are many people who sit down and say, ah, there's nothing wrong. Me, I'm thinking well. But you are seeing anger in your life. You need help. You are rejecting it. I don't, you are, you are killing and fighting everybody. This is a manifestation you do not like. Hallelujah. We jump and say everything is alright. And we go back and demons oppress us. You wake up and struggle and you just get up and keep quiet. Are you listening to me? We jump and we say you are born again, but you are dying of lust, suffering from pornography, masturbation, all kinds of things. We sugarcoat everything and come on Sunday, including men of God. Are you listening to me? You know I'm not lying. You know I'm not lying. 
Because it's happening to a number of you here. You know that I'm not lying. Except you do not want truth and you do not want change. Hallelujah. I was told of a situation where a minister, a minister, I mean a, a, a civil service minister now, was running after a particular man of God. You know why? Because the man bought a new jeep and called the prophet to come and dedicate it. When the prophet came and saw the new jeep, ah, the prophet said, you mean you just bought this? He said, yes. And he said that he wants to have a prophetic match with it. Because just like they went round Jericho seven times. See, the Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it preach any gospel you want. Are you listening to me? You can twist it to preach anything you want. And the guy went on his Jericho march never to return. And the man waited, car that he bought. And the next thing, how many times have you seen police chasing ministers? Give me back my car. What did you do to me? Give me back my wife. Give me back my children. Hallelujah. Right now, to receive, I mean, it's terrible to receive if Reuben comes now and says, man of God, I have a problem. They say this problem requires come with a, a prophetic seed according to the type. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. And we drop all kinds of baskets in church. You want a, a fair guy, this is the basket. You want any our own, this, this is the one. You just want to marry anything, this is your own. Hallelujah. And while all of this is happening, listen, while all of this is happening, the ministers stand and have no conscience and they strangle and rob their members of every one naira and one cobble and finish everything to the point that people, I'm not saying these people did not give willingly. They gave by manipulation. And while that happens, then the invited minister who raised the offering and the man of God starts fighting. I raised five million, you give me five hundred thousand, are you joking? Add something. And this is what they are discussing behind stage. There is a kind of spiritual slavery that Satan wants to bring to the church that if we don't attack it now, it will be worse than the colonial slavery. Are you listening to me? There are many ladies today that have refused to marry because their pastor has disapproved everybody until he gets his prophetic revelation from whatever. Anybody that comes and they threaten you with cause or they say you will not give birth. The Bible is called the most sure word of prophecy to the point that many parents are, many ministers have made parents who are having jobs that is taking care of their families. They have made them to leave those jobs and resign and say, come and work in the ministry. How will I fend for my family? Are you joking? Are you joking with the word of the prophet? And then the family sell their possessions. Some of your parents are victims like that. That's when you started suffering till today. Are you listening to me? Ministers manipulate parents to sell their whole company and their whole estate and carry the money and come and sow. All in the name of him, 21 days, there is a prophetic miracle coming. From that date, it's five years now. At least if the word of God is true. Read your Bible. Every time the prophet spoke and they obeyed, something happened. Hallelujah. Many homes are being broken right now because prophets are coming. The day a prophet enters a house, he comes to scatter the house. Suddenly you come and he just sees and comes to touch the lady. You, you are Regina. She's the one behind all of this. Why are you people suffering? And then they leave the family with more confusion. And they tell them, come and meet me in my office. What happens? They have joined the key of the slavery. 
And then he starts pulling them. Intelligent people have become victims of wickedness. Do you know why many people do not attack this gospel? Because if you are a pastor, this business is highly lucrative. Highly lucrative. Imagine if I use the prophetic to know how much you people have. Imagine those miracle services where you have people full blue roof in and out. And I force everybody to do a prophetic emptying of account. See, see, listen, listen, listen. The way I will be serious, you will never know is witchcraft. Because there are already people falling down. And I'll say, just like you are seeing, stand up, stand up, package a seed. Then I'll package my own. Is it not coming to me? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, as you are laughing, I want you to know that this is a serious thing in the mind of God. Hallelujah. Sorry, the water. And then we now have the recent outbreak of of all kinds of water. Hallelujah. Prophetic water. Apostolic water. We get people born again by giving them water. We get people healed. Every kind of thing. Hallelujah. A man of God opens the water, speaks in it, and gives you the prophetic water. And with gladness and joy, you want a husband. You take the man of God's prophetic water. Hallelujah. And all kinds of things. They give members all kinds of dangerous and demonic therapy. Get up by 12.30 exactly. Stand naked at the left side of your corridor. Make sure you are naked. Anoint yourself. Anoint your this. Anoint your that. Come on, please. Who taught the church this madness for God's sake? What kind of madness is this? Hallelujah. I watched on TV one time um, 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 what they call this this Nestle bottle it was anointing and, and, um, what they call it uh, anointing oil this man of God opened this thing and told him you open your mouth this actually opened and he turned this thing and said drink it the reason why you are not angry is because it didn't happen to your mother or your sister or somebody and you will see old women who came for a touch and then when they do it and the man is not healed, many ministers preach all kinds of messages and say, left for me, there's nothing wrong the flow of power from my direction. If it does not touch you, you do not believe. Listen, if Jesus will require you to do a lot of things before he will touch you, then he is not love. And what he's doing is not called mercy. Everybody Jesus healed in the Bible was not born again. Let's take responsibility and say there is something wrong. We have not contended for those realms of power and go back to the secret place rather than giving lousy and flimsy excuses. A man sows one million. You told him when he sows one million in two months, his wife will be pregnant. The wife did not get pregnant and they came. He said, what happened? Did you sleep with her the day I told him? He said, yes, sir. I, I did everything the way. Look at a man and his wife being controlled by, by the stupidity of ministers. God gave me a prophetic word. Sleep with your wife only on the 15th. Come on, no, nobody will bring that nonsense to me. Hallelujah. And then we have the era of stickers. Prophetic, prophetic, uh, stickers. That drive demons, drive witches, drive wizards, drive uh, bad luck, drive bad husband, drive bad wife. Oh God. And people put these things in unbelievable places. Are you concerned? This is not the kind of gospel that came from the generals. Hallelujah. Very soon, men of God will put prophetic 
shoe licking prophetic service. Look at the look at the newspaper that carried the report of the man that slept. I think he slept with all the ladies in his church. They had a vigil naked. Who who followed it? It's on paper. Night vigil. Once you get to the church, you do a prophetic removing of your clothes, and and you prophetically become insane. Hallelujah. And then we have stickers. The blue one is 5,000. This one solves only marital problems. The, the red one is for business. is 9,000. The, the, the pink one, the yellow one, is for academic challenges. It has not been working. And many of the people that give testimonies, you don't know them. The day you and all the people in your community where there's nobody that testifies that is working. Listen to me. God is angry at some things. And if we do not rise up, I'm not just saying this to expose people and to talk, but somebody must speak. Hallelujah. The spirit of witchcraft manifesting in the church. And then we have prophetic revelation. Your name is Reuben. You just graduated from computer science, from maths. You're, you want to marry. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are in a relationship. There is this and that that you have. And people clap. Wow! And then, and then, listen, listen. And then the gullible members just sit down helpless. Oh, help me. Hey, help me, oh, help me. And the man will say, I, I do, you are not serious. Help me, help me. Listen, listen, listen. If this is what we want to call church, then a time will come Christians will stop going to church. Because a church will become a place of bondage that the government must come in. Right now, the government and law courts are beginning to be involved in church issues because of the catastrophe that is happening. Any young man just gets up and feels he's anointed and calls one guy there, calls one guy here and says he's going to join them in, in holy matrimony. The parents do not know. Are you following me now? They ran away from their parents and came and met any quack prophet somewhere. He doesn't ask where their relatives are. Doesn't ask whether the parents permitted the wedding. By the prophetic unction upon me, I hereby pronounce you husband and wife. And then they find out that there See, many people are suffering. The Bible says, he that breaks the hedge, the serpent will strike. The men of God are getting richer the innocent church members are getting poorer. To an extent that when people are coming to church, they keep all that money that they need for the week in the car. Because they know the one they are coming to church with must finish. Must finish. There have been projects from the day that church started and it will never end. There's not a day that people can say, we thank God. That by the sure mercies of the God of David, this project has been completed. A project that would have been completed five years ago, they are still collecting offering for it till today. And while we do all this jamboree, we tell people to shout all kinds of things. We tell people to cry all kinds of things. We tell people to scream all kinds of things. We tell members, carry your chair, put on your head, jump up, sit down, put this, and, and just say, I'm moving forward. And you, you see a, a congregation of, of unbelievably um, 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 mentally, and, and you see, this is how the world is watching TV. <laughs> and somebody says, honey, for heaven's sake, come and see what these Christians are doing. The church has become a place of utter confusion where hopeless people come to meet a hopeful deity called the pastor or the prophet or the this and that. 
They give you admission. You are supposed to leave for Canada tomorrow. You cannot go because your mother has not reported to the prophet. And they must say, the prophet is busy and he travels. So you cancel the trip because the prophet must give his prophetic blessings. Otherwise, it will not train. And there is a prophetic covering that only him can give. Come on! The devil did not kill you before you started joining that church. Don't let anybody manipulate you with witchcraft. Deception in the body of Christ. And people are getting comfortable with it. And the tragedy is this. Innocent people who used to preach truth. Are you listening to me? Started attending meetings where they invite them and they invite the fake man of God too. Ministering, Apostle Joshua Selman, prophet, this and that and that, slams Zaria in a three day powerful crusade. And what happens? Satan begins to use genuine people to endorse those who are manifesting these things. So that when you see your pastor who you know truly loves God and you see him in company of other people, you say, ah, this means this guy is also genuine. But that's what happened in the book of Acts. When Paul entered, a lady who was operating by the spirit of divination, when she saw Paul, what did she say? She said, these are holy men of God. Was she lying? She was seeking partnership. Paul discerning. He cast that devil from her. And what happened? The Bible says the owners who manipulate her, they packed out of business. Just like many ministers who pack out of business because of this message. Because I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, let this message go far. If not because men of God have been eating your father's salary or your mother's salary month after month, you would have been better out of the way you are living. Everybody comes. The, the moment you have breakthrough. And then the surprising thing is when any member of your family dies, you will never see them. Because they don't believe in all of those things. They, they don't have a gospel to preach for dead people. They don't have a gospel to preach for somebody who has been fired from his job. They only have a gospel to preach. And all the spiritual sons and ladies are handsome guys and beautiful ladies. When they look at you and you don't look like it, they say, no, you are not my... You have to represent uh, pa Papa. Lord, have mercy upon your body. Because the Lord is sad at what is happening. The church has become a business venture. A business venture. Are you listening to me? Everybody just does every kind of thing. When the pastor wants to promote anybody he likes to get gain, he will say, now, this person has started selling fuel. His filling station is called RW. All the members of this church must, it's a prophetic instruction, patronize him. What is the meaning of that? What is the meaning of that? Why must I buy fuel in RW? In RW? I can choose total. What if total is my own filling station? I leave it and go and patronize this because of the commission. And then the person comes to say, Papa, since you prophesied to me, doors have been opening anyhow at the expense of people. We are going to pray this night. Oh. We are going to really pray this night. Are you following me now? Witchcraft and manipulation. Oh foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? Devilish teachings. Godless teachings. Who has bewitched you? We package teachings that keep members in slavery. In slavery. Again and again. Because the more they are in slavery, the more we benefit. Hallelujah. Let me show you another thing that the Lord showed me. Leaders, our retreat has started this night. We have already started our retreat. Tomorrow we are just continuing. Hallelujah. John chapter 2. Please follow me closely. The Lord began to speak about another thing. John chapter 2. 
Thank you, Jesus. Can you just pray in tongues for one minute? And say, Lord, we thank you because your word is sanitizing the church. Mando krasibadi kashiba ladabash. Ma prato kaposa de belene mokoso froto subregere belene bosh. Lord, we love you. Banzete belene bosh kopria sabalada. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In John chapter 2, we start from verse 7. This was the first miracle that Jesus performed. I hope you know whatever is first gives you a pattern. Are you following me now? Let's examine the first miracle that Jesus performed. John 2 verse 7. Jesus said unto them, listen. Let's even start from one. I'll read first. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Are you following me now? And they what? They, they lacked wine. Look at me. They called people for marriage, but they lacked wine. Hallelujah. They called people for marriage, yet there was no wine to feed them. Read on. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. Listen, listen. His mother said unto thee, The mother said unto thee, Please follow me. Whatsoever he tells you to, So, there is a relationship between doing and servants. When the mother wanted something to be done, who did she talk to? Servants. Follow me. Verse 6. And there were six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three fur kings apiece. And Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw some out now and bear it unto who? The governor. So we understand that that feast had some top people called what? Governors. Hmm. And they bore it. And when the ruler, the first question is, how can a feast have a ruler? Look at me. Is a feast such a big issue that a man will become a ruler? Are you following me now? There were people who called themselves governors, rulers, and innocent people came for the wedding, but they had no wine. Why didn't Jesus talk to the rulers? He left the rulers and went and he was dealing with the servants. Please, are you following me? I'm giving you a revelation to the body of Christ. Watch this. Let's keep reading. Hmm. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, what happened? And knew not from where it was. Listen. The rulers knew nothing about the new miracle and the new things that Jesus was doing. Only who? Servants. Now listen to what your Bible says. Read it in bracket. It says, but the servants who drew the water knew. This is a mystery that is happening in the body of Christ. Are you following me now? There is a feast. There are great men. They were honored because they are the men of Timba and Caliba, isn't it? They are the ones that know the happenings of God. And the Bible says wine had finished and they were still deceiving people. Claiming as if the wedding was going on fine. But then, what happened? Jesus was busy dealing with the servants. Because Jesus was touched that there were people and there was no wine for them. And Jesus said, I cannot deal with these rulers again. They are deceitful people. The spirit of witchcraft. And he switched and said, servants, will you do whatever I tell you to do? He said, yes. He said, now let me begin to walk with you. This is the prophetic mystery of what is happening in the body of Christ. The Bible says, when they started testing the new wine, the rulers felt embarrassed because this was not the kind of wine they planned to give the people. Are you following me now? The people had been drinking every kind of premature wine. Suddenly, they started tasting a wine that was balanced and well brewed. And the people asked, they said, ah, where was this wine? The Bible says, the rulers did not know where the wine came from. 
But those who were servants, who were not busy looking for title, but were interested in doing. The Bible says the servants knew. Please, are you following me now? The revelation and the moves of God that he's doing. Amos chapter 3. Let me show you some scriptures. Revelation will only be for servants in this season. Not for lords. Not for them who usurp authority. Because the moves of the spirit that he's bringing upon the body. Amos chapter 3. If you are there, please say amen. amen. Verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto who? Stop. Don't forget about the prophet. He reveals his secrets to who? Men of God. He reveals the secrets to his servants. Whatever version says, son, just forget about it. That's a wrong interpretation. His servants. So, when God wants to do a thing, while those who believe they are the custodians of revelation, who are yoking people, those who are saying, Lord, is only by grace that I have to serve. Would you reveal to me your counsel? The Bible says the Lord will do nothing, but he will go to those people and reveal his secrets. Are you following me? Revelation chapter 1. Something is happening in this place. We hail you most high. Are you there? Revelations 1. Verse 1. Let's read. 1 to read. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Stop. It's called the revelation of who? So this is Christ wanting to reveal himself. Is that correct? But let's see those who got it. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show who? To show who? Is it in your Bible? The revelation that God gave. And he gave that this mystery that I'm bringing about myself to the body, I will hide it from those who believe they are the ones who are the men of God and yoking the body. He told the Spirit of God, go and search around the earth. When you find a servant, reveal it to him. Are you following me now? Are you getting something? The spirit of servanthood. The spirit of servanthood. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. We have always quoted this scripture, but let me show you a mystery. Hmm. This is the prophecy that will be happening. We have always seen it in a wrong way, but I will show you something. Ecclesiastes 10. Please, are you there? Verse 7. If you are there, say amen. If you are there, say amen. Let's read. One, to read. Hold on. Who are those riding on the horses? Who are those riding on the horses? Who are those walking afoot? This is what will happen. It says servants. Because when you read in Revelation chapter 19, it says the person who was upon the horse, meaning the servant, was the Lord himself. And only those who will be servants, who will be allowed to ride on this horse of revelation and glory that is coming upon the body. Are you following me now? He said, I see a mystery. Why is it that servants are allowed to ride on horses while those who call themselves princes are walking afoot? This is the dethroning that the Spirit of God will do by himself. Listen, you will see a manifestation of servants that will make you fear. They will catch revelations and walk in the anointing of the Spirit. And all the people who claim to be lords you enter a church and you see the pictures of a man as if it's a photo studio. He's the Lord Almighty of this cathedral. Hmm. Are you listening to me? The tragedy I've seen in the church is many men are looking for the works of God and the power of God, but they do not want to know God. Are you listening to me? Psalms 103 verse 7. Psalms 103 verse 7. The Bible said he showed his ways to Moses. But to the nation of Israel, they only saw his acts. Are you listening to me? And what we are displaying in church is the acts of God, which is wonderful. 
But I tell you, the revelation that will last according to what God showed me is those who knew his way. Why did he show Moses his way? But then he shielded his way from the nation of Israel. Joshua chapter 1. Verse 1. Kapata kapatu supatakaya. Mam pros kapatishe meleko sipada. Are you there? Joshua chapter 1. Let's read. One to read. Now the Lord said unto Joshua. Go ahead and read. He said, Moses, my servant. Are you following me now? He says, now the Lord said unto Joshua. He said, Moses, my servant. So God called Moses who? That's why Moses saw the ways of God. While the rest, Israel was busy seeing his act. Moses said, although I have seen fame and power, although I have spoken to God visibly, I choose to be the servant of God. And God said, I will show you my ways. But today that stand afar, they will just see the motions of the spirit without understanding the mind of Christ. He said, Moses, my servant. Please, are you getting blessed tonight? This is a prophetic message to the body. Those who usurp authority. Matthew 20. Let's see what Jesus Christ said there. Jesus Christ made a very powerful statement. That I don't want us to play with. If you have a Bible, a red letter edition, you will see the writings of Jesus in red letters. 20. Verse 21. Now very quickly because I want us to pray. This was when, listen, and he said unto her, let me read. What will thou? She said unto him, grant that these my two sons may sit one at thy right hand. And one at thy left. So the woman came and she wanted her son. The mother of James and John. What did she want? Authority. Power. She wanted them to be the rulers. And Jesus said, ah, you don't know what you are asking for, oh madam. Let's jump to verse 24. When the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation. Why? They were angry. They were saying, all of us are trying to be servants. And here you are trying to make arrangement to lord it over us. Are you following me now? When they heard it, they were angry. This is the message of Jesus to the body of Christ. Verse 25. But Jesus said unto them, He said unto him, Ye know that the princes, you see why the princes are walking afoot? Are you linking this scripture now with Psalms 103? Ye know that the princes, what do they do? Of the Gentiles exercise what? Dominion over them. And they and they that are great exercise what? Authority over them. But here is the word of the Lord to the body. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your... That's the word here. Yes, servant. That's where some versions say minister. You see where the word minister comes from? A minister is a servant. Not a lord. You subbing authority in the name of whatever. 27. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your... Let him be your... Verse 28. He said, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto... Come on, offering raisers. Come on, prophetic connections. And all kinds of things. He says, the primary... I'm not saying you should not bless. I hope you understand the balance. All of these things that I talk about... When you begin to emphasize one truth, you will soon fall into witchcraft. The second message of Christ to the body of Christ is that those who will receive revelation and walk with the Lord in the seasons to come are those who will accept to be servants. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? Let me show you an interesting scripture. Philippians chapter 2. We have taught on this scripture, but the Lord opened my eyes by revelation. Philippians chapter 2. Shikapakura Sibalada. Mambroski Prashti Brashta. Atosete Basimala Cambria. Zizebekete Baladabosh Tembros Kapatayana. Are you in Philippians?
Philippians 2. The Lord showed me a mystery. Verse 5. Let this mind or this mindset be in you, church of the Lord Jesus Christ, that was in Jesus Christ. What is the mindset? Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with who? Now, listen. Although, listen, listen, please. Jesus did not think that when he lets people know that he is God, it will be that he is insulting God and it's not true. Is that correct? And he's saying, let this mind be in you. That means, please come. Come. That means like God, this guy should, I should not think it robbery when this guy can stand and hold shoulders with me. Are you following me now? He said, let this mind of servanthood be in you. That God Almighty, Jesus was not afraid to come and stand and say, we are one. Does that mean Jesus disrespects the Father? Please, are you following me now? But in our churches right now, if this guy should come and stand and say, good afternoon, Josh, I would think it is what? Robbery. Are you following me now? You see the mindset God is saying, let it be in us. He's saying, do not think it robbery when you stand and say, well, look, we are not the same. Oh yeah, get down, kneel down. Are you supposed to? Come on, my friend. You don't know the level of anointing that I'm walking in. The Bible says Jesus was so confident that God understood and that he had the servant heart. In other words, this was the culture of heaven. It was not robbery. So Jesus could say, I and my father are one. Hallelujah. There are people, even if their mother and father calls them Joshua Selma, they look and say, Mommy, let me tell you, there is difference between the spirit and ministry. Apostle Joshua Selma. Robbery. Are you following me now? So, there are many, there are many megards in church called pastor watching against those they want to call armed robbers. Those who want to rise to their position. And the Bible says Jesus did not count it to be robbery when he said I am equal with God. In church today, we believe that the greatest is the man of God. And we even have something called chief servant. In English, we call that oxymoron. That's nonsense. Hallelujah. Chief. Then you lie to us that you are a servant. No, sir. You are either a chief or you are a servant. Chief servant is the way of trying to say among the servants, I am the greatest. Is that not the same thing we are talking about? Do you know that the highest cadre of the angelic realm, they are called messenger angels. That's the title you give to great angels. Hallelujah. The highest of the angelic realm is called, they are called messenger angels. Are you listening to me? And then after the messenger angels, we have the seraphs. The seraphs are the heads of the messenger angels. And then we have the cherubims. Are you listening to me? Before man was created, after the cherubims, we have God himself. You see how Satan, who was called the anointed cherub, that means among the cherubs, he was the one who was separated. Are you following me now? Consecrated. And then the, when God created man, the head of the cherubs became the woman. Are you following me now? And then the head of the woman is the man. And then the head of man is God. And what happened? Satan said, no way. No way. He wouldn't want to be a servant. And so he said, I will exalt myself above the stars of God. And as a result, what happened? God judged him and he came down. Right now we have people whose 
Ambition is to lift themselves. See, let me tell you, there are many nonsense that are unnecessary in church. There are many churches that when you go, you see a big throne kept somewhere. I'm not talking of the Anglican communion. It's a system. Are you following me now? Are you listening to me? I schooled in a seminary and I like their system. You see a big chair somewhere. When the man of God enters, you just sit down. All hail. King. The rabbi of the ages. And then he walks and looks at the members and says, I know you people will understand. You poor are children. And what he's sharing is nonsense. Nonsense. Not even scriptural. And he says, what I'm sharing with you is deep. Witchcraft. I hail you most high. I hail you most high. I truly hail you most high. The Bible says before the day of the Lord, the spirit of Elijah will come once again. And this is what is happening in the body of Christ. Those who will walk in revelations. Hear me, friends. They are those who will be ready to become servants. Am I saying you do not honor people? Did we not teach on the law of honor here? Hallelujah. That's why the ministers are seated there. We will never have a revelation where we keep the ministers in a congregation. Because honor is to whom honor is due. Am I saying you will not sow into the life of people? But where it becomes manipulation, I'm telling you it is witchcraft. And hear me, the judgment of God is beginning from his house. Many of you will see things that will surprise you. You will see ministries that will pack up and it's not demons. The hand of the Lord itself will close down many ministries because of the manipulation and the satanism they are bringing. You know why? Because in the church, wine has finished. There is a transition. I tell you, the old wine that they have been intoxicating people with, that is leading them to error, God himself has made that wine to finish. And in the secret place, there are servants that God is already giving instruction. He's saying, begin to fill pots of water. Fill pots of water. For very soon, I will turn it into the new wine that will characterize my move for the next season. And the rulers are there. Church as usual. Business as usual. Church marketing as usual. And the servants are saying, Lord, what will you do? Mary said, because you are a servant, whatever he tells you to do, do it. I will go wherever you lead me. Yeah, I will go whatever you tell me. To say, I will say, whatever you want me to know, I will know. Men who will not be ashamed. He said, Paul, a servant. We have taught that servants are the caricature. I have shown you from scripture. In the book of Revelations, he said the revelation of the Lord Jesus that he gave that they should only what? I hope you know revelation is an unveiling of that which has been previously hidden. And God is about to open some scrolls that have been hidden. But the spirit of God is searching for servants. And he said, the, he's telling the Holy Ghost has been told by the Father move around the earth anywhere you find servants call them tell them join those who are changing water to wine begin to join there is a new army the rulers are there jumping suddenly they will start testing a wine they know nothing about and they will be angry they will attempt to persecute the servant but the wine will be too sweet men will not deny it this is the word of the lord to the body of christ let me tell you, there is coming right now all across this nation, all across Saria.
the true servants of God are busy talking with God while the rulers are there raising offerings, making themselves rich. The wine has finished. Many churches are just doing the motions. I bring you a prophetic word. The old wine has finished in many churches. In the wedding of Cana, the first miracle. Bible says, and the wine finished. But the rulers were busy sitting. Serve more wine. But the wine had finished. Jesus Christ was in that meeting and they did not honor him. That's what is happening in many churches. Is it not interesting that Jesus was sitting in the congregation while the rulers were the ones on the high table? Is that not what is happening in our churches? Jesus is somewhere sitting in the congregation and there are rulers conducting the wedding. And the wine finished. They were so complacent. The wine finished. When the wine finished, the rulers did not even know it was the servants that went to the Lord. They went to Mary and Mary took them to Jesus and said, look, whatever. Jesus was agitated. How can men come and there is no wine? And the wine was not sweet. And he said, because you are servants, you humbled yourself and you came. Are you ready to do what I will tell you to do? Will you join these people? He said, no, we are servants. He said, now go and get six six vessels and fetch water many many of the rulers will pass and just see water the miracle has not happened the water the bible says to be washed by the regen the washing of the water many of these servants are on training you are criticizing them they are not hearing the jeeps yet some don't have crowds in their churches yet they are the servants because very soon there will be an exchange of the old wine and the new wine Many men are walking in integrity and they are suffering because of their integrity. Are you listening to me? Many of you have been misled in your churches because you spoke and you sold and money didn't come. They have insulted you that you do not have faith. Hold on. There is an exchange in the spirit. Those who will dare to hear the voice of the master and say, Lord, whatever you will tell me to do, I will do. And God says, go ahead. Begin to fetch. He's looking for them. The spirit of God comes to Zaria and he starts moving church to church, campus to campus. He finds a servant and the revelation comes and he brings him. He comes here, this guy is a Lord and he goes back. He finds a servant. I tell you, there is a separation of servants and the time will come when you will see men walk in power, walk in revelation, authentic revelation. For now, the serpents of Pharaoh are still dangling around the palace. Soon, you will see the miracle when the snake, the rod of God, upon the hand of his servant Moses, will swallow up every other doctrine. This will happen in the body of Christ. A day will come, Babalao will wear Agbada and sit down and stand to preach and because his servant is seated, he will fall down and drop dead right there. It will happen. It will happen. It will happen. Wherever you lead me, I will go. Listen, if you are here, desist from pride and arrogance. Are you listening to me? Especially if you have the, the call of God upon your life. When you know that your man of God or whoever politely seek room to tell them that this is not the way of God. The spirit of God will not strive with man forever. God will first move in the ministry of mercy. If it does not work, the sword of judgment will come. Because that is what he did in the days of Pharaoh. He told Moses, politely go. Tell Pharaoh, you are putting my people in bondage. Let my people go. Let my people go. Ten times Pharaoh did not hear. And he said, all right, I will not talk to you again. Suddenly by night. The Bible says the angel of death moved around, crossed over Goshen and went to the city and began to smite. The firstborn is the most valuable asset of a man. Are you listening to me? Many people will lose many things in the body although they are men of God. But the spirit of God will not contend with man for too long. 
And I welcome you to be part of what God is doing by maintaining the spirit of a servant. Are you listening to me? I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, keep me. Let me be a servant. A servant does not mean you are wearing t-shirt instead of suit. No. That's just simplicity. That's not humility. But that you come to a point where you realize that everyone, God has called us to serve you. Are you listening to me? Yes, you will bless us. Yes, you will respect us. But the primary ministry is to serve you, to pray for you, to fast for you, to tell you the truth like I'm telling. That's why before you come, the ushers clean the seat for you because we are servants. Are you listening to me? That's why until everybody is seated, the ushers don't sit down. We are servants. That's why when we stand to minister and there are people standing, we tell them, come and occupy the seats. God has not called us just to be Lord and King of Kings. Apostle Joshua Selman, the president of Koinonia, Pastor Jakes, Pastor Stanley, let me tell you something. Many of you are already receiving a wrong spirit. You have collected a wrong button and you are running. Tonight we are going to pray. And you are going to say, Lord, help me. Have mercy on me. Are you listening to me? Oh, tonight we are going to pray. Because many of you are already getting attracted. You like it. You like it. You like the suits. You like everything. You like seeing people worshipping you. You enjoy it. That ecstatic feeling of relevance is what is driving many pastors and many people. But wherever you lead me, yeah, I will go. It's wherever you lead me, I will go. Oh Lord, let me not become one of those rulers and those governors that sit for nothing. That when an old wine will finish, I will not be part of the next program of God. Wrong spirits moving across the body of Christ. And we are happy. You watch them on TV. You like them. You admire them. Listen. I'm not teaching you to hate them. I do not hate any man of God as surely as the Lord lives. I have learned from different people. But I will not receive any spirit that is not of Christ. Are you listening to me? The Bible says Jesus humbled himself. Right now, men of God, just stand. And when you say Joshua Selman, they say me. You are calling me Joshua Selman. Of course, you can honor the anointing. You can honor the grace. You can honor the office. There's nothing wrong with that. But my name is not Apostle. My name is Joshua Selman. Are you listening to me? But you want to honor the anointing. And then you can honor the office. There's nothing wrong. But where it becomes that I am standing and considering it to be robbery. That's a spirit of error. And I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. The judgment of God is coming. I tell you the truth. And there was no wine. And there were only servants. While Jesus was communicating with the servants, the masters of ceremony were there doing their religion. To the point that they started serving the wine. And the people did not know. For servants will again ride on horses. And princes will be surprised that they are walking afoot. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.